23.3 strike near San Jose, California America. An earthquake has been reported for the third time today east of San Jose, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. The most recent quake was measured as a preliminary 3.3 magnitude earthquake and struck at about 6.20 p.m., about 6.2. I'm Scott McGrew in for Marcus Washington. And I'm Chris Sanchez. Before we get to that, some breaking news in the South Bay you might already know about. A 3.3 magnitude earthquake, which hit about 30 minutes ago in the East San Jose foothills. We broke into programming just after it happened. Scott told you about it. We did speak with people who say they felt it too, including here in our newsroom. At this point, there are no reports of damage, but we want to know if you felt that quake. Um, it felt like shivering, like, well, like, it shook for about two, three seconds, and then my coworkers, we both, we all looked at each other, it was like, was that you shaking your leg? You're like, no, not really. So then we are like, oh, it's an earthquake, and we all kind of got together. It's the 14th floor. Yeah, we were on the 14th floor, so it was pretty high. And we felt in a series of earthquakes, a lot of you have been feeling in the South Bay, ABC7 News reporter Matt Keller live for us at USGS in Menlo Park. Matt? Reggie, I was in the South Bay yesterday when these earthquakes hit, and guess what? I didn't feel a thing, and I know a lot of other people didn't feel a thing either. But we all want to know, is this a sign that a bigger earthquake is on the way? Here's USGS geophysicist Brian Kilgore. Four shocks do exist. That's, that's, they're, they're real. Um, un unfortunately, the science and technology today don't really allow us to to look at any one earthquake and say, yes, this is a foreshock of something larger to come. Unfortunately, the foreshock determination comes after a larger earthquake occurred. Yeah, you won't know if it's a foreshock until after the big quake. The first quake, though, yesterday, a 3.3 hit around 9.30 yesterday morning. Seven aftershocks followed, ranging from 1.9 and 3.3. Kilgore says the cluster of quakes occurred between the Calaveras Fault and the Hayward Fault in the eastern foothills of San Jose. He says the Hayward Fault is very active, and smaller earthquakes like this are to be expected. Kilgore also said the Hayward Fault is capable of a much bigger earthquake. In fact, the USGS says there is a 72% probability over the next 26 years that a 6.7 magnitude quake will happen here in the Bay Area. That's a good reminder to make sure you have your emergency plan and your emergency supplies. Reporting live in Menlo Park, Matt Keller, ABC 7 News. There will be swallowings of Earth's swallowings, large lands that will actually disappear under the Earth. They'll, they'll, be, they'll be gone, either into the water or they'll be destroyed head over heels. There'll only be dirt left. Earthquakes in the east and the west and in Jazeera Al Arab. These are massive earthquakes. The whole world will feel them. One in the east and one in the west and one in the Arabian Peninsula. Mother Nature is again putting Italians to the test. Fortunately, no fatalities. This morning out of Italy where a powerful earthquake has rocked again now the same area. This morning's quake was the strongest to strike Italy in more than 35 years. Nuns fled as tremors shook the central square of Norcia, where the main basilica was damaged. This area was just shaken by a pair of strong quakes on Wednesday. First warning of a monster earthquake off America's coast. The worst natural disaster in the history of the nation is coming, say the scientists. And they it, are all in agreement. It is absolutely coming. Thousands of dogs will bark at alert before the ground liquefies in one area. And a wall of water will slam into the Pacific Northwest up to 100 feet high and up to 700 feet across. More than 10,000 will die. It is coming. It is a certainty. The question is when. The warning is from the New Yorker magazine. We'll give you all the details from the scientists uh, and find out why it's already all overdue. The big, big one in the Pacific Northwest, an area I'd never even heard of as far as seismic activity goes. Hang on, this, this is interesting. Read a stunning article by Catherine Schulz in The New Yorker this week. And frankly, if I lived right now in the Pacific Northwest, I'd be considering moving, seriously. The gist of it is this. The federal government estimates 13,000 Americans will die in a major earthquake and tsunami in the Pacific Northwest. It's not a question of weather, but when. This earthquake is coming and it's overdue. Consider that the magnitude 9.0 earthquake in Japan, just a few years ago, remember that? 
killed more than 15,000 people in the north of Japan and injured thousands of others. Seismologists say that the quake that will strike on our Pacific Northwest coastline should be even stronger at up to a 9.2. They call such a quake a margin rupture quake and it's every bit as bad as it sounds. Here's the reason for it. Our entire continent sits on the North American tectonic shelf, right? Plate, I should say. Off the coast of the Pacific Northwest from the top of Washington State all the way down to Northern California. This is it. And another plate called the Juan de Fuca is trying to slide up under North America, but it's, it's stuck. We have an illustration over here in the big wall. Let me show you what this is. This is our continent here. This, the, this is the Cascada Mountains. This is the Cascadia, what do they call it? The Cascadia what? The Cascadia Bridge. I, I was actually asking him, but thank you. The North American plate here and the Juan de Fuca plate here. This one's sliding up under and eventually this is gonna go down, send a huge wall of water up. That wall will go all the way over to Japan and the other will come onto our, onto our shore within 15 minutes. And when it slips, it will unleash not only a colossal earthquake, but also that tsunami. 700 miles long and in some places up to a 100 foot high wall of water and whatever it's pushing like houses and dump trucks and, and, and schools. Thousands and thousands will not escape. The New Yorker quotes a FEMA official who says and I quote our operating assumption is that everything west of Interstate 5 will be toast. Everything west of Interstate 5 is gone. That's Seattle, Tacoma, Portland and Olympia, Salem and Eugene wiped out altogether about seven million people. That's not including tourists. So think of summertime. The New Yorker reports that FEMA calculations indicate the disaster will damage or destroy about a million buildings, including 3,000 schools and one third of all fire stations. And perhaps the worst part of all of this, these sorts of earthquakes happen at regular intervals in exactly this part of the world, have forever. On average, according to seismologists, about every 240 years. So when was the last one of these? These massive 9.2 or so earthquakes? Well, the last one was more than 300 years ago, the year 1700. It struck in the Pacific Northwest and sent a 600-foot wave of water all the way to Japan. So right now, on average, the Pacific Northwest is decades overdue for the really, really big one. Michio Kaku is a uh, physicist and professor at City College of New York. This article is stunning. Is it, over, if it overstated in any way? No, the Cascadia Fault is an earthquake waiting to happen. We know it's going to happen with an energy 30 times, 30 times the maximum energy of the San Andreas Fault. So Hollywood has us brainwashed into thinking the big one is going to be in California. No, the Cascadia Fault would pack energy 30 times the energy that the San Andreas Fault can muster. The article speaks of a liquefaction of the earth, that part of the earth will turn to liquid. Uh, that's right. We're talking about major energy surges inside the ground that'll cause it to liquefy. We've seen that in Japan. We have saw that at Fukushima, and it's almost like quicksand. One day you're walking on solid ground, the next you're falling right into a quicksand. This earthquake would last four minutes or more, the rattling and the shaking, and then within 15 minutes they estimate this wall of water in, in the entire inundation zone you could have water up to 100 feet high. That's right, and in the inundation zone, we have 70,000 people that have almost no clue as to what could happen. You know, in Japan, you have to live with earthquakes every day. Children go through, uh, through tests and drills. People are conscious of this. But in the Pacific Northwest, it's barely on, it barely rates on the radar screen. There's something that happens before the shaking that we can sense, that we can, sensors can pick up. That's an early warning system that they have all over Japan, especially in the north and in the Tokyo area. They've been trying to get it pushed through, looking for money for it in the Seattle-Tacoma area, nothing. That's right. Before the earthquake actually hits, there's a compression wave that is detected by animals, for example. Animals start to act very strange. and We've seen that happen before earthquakes. And then a minute, two minutes later, boom, you head for the hills because there's nothing left to do except to go to high ground. You mentioned what this sort of event has caused in, in history. That's right. In the year 1700, there was a massive earthquake and tsunami which surged over Japan. And then uh, running the videotape backwards, you can actually see that in 1700. Did you do that? Whoa! Whoa! Okay. Whoa! All right. That's whoa, an earthquake. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. And that's a big one.